Hey guys, welcome back to another episode, and today we are talking all about Diltiazem, more commonly referred to as Cardizem, so let's get started. So when EMS uses Cardizem, we're mainly using it for two uh, cardiac rhythms for dysrhythmias, right? So if you see a flutter or a fib on the monitor and they are you know, stable patients, however, their rate is too fast, right? And we will talk about this. We are going to be giving Cardizem to, to try and help assist fixing this. Now, a flutter like you see on the left here is more where you're having a lot of uh, circular conductivity within the, the atriums, but you're still getting, you know, a slow ventricle rate. Whereas AFib, you're having lots and lots of atriums fire, individual atria cells fire all at the same time while still producing a regular uh, outputted QRS ventricular rate, okay? And we will get into exactly uh, what each one of these are right here. So atrial fibrillation, right? AFib is an irregularly irregular rhythm which means there's no discernible pattern to any of it right the no p wave is a big one it's literally just going to look like a bunch of artifact right no isoelectric baseline so we don't actually know where you know like an st elevation may or may not start because it could wave up and down uh depending on the rhythm right? There's, there's variable rates. We could have an AFib in the 60s or we could have an AFib in the 220s. It really just depends on where that variable rate is and uh, are they symptomatic or not symptomatic, right? It's always a narrow QRS because this is a, a narrow complex tachycardia and it is the most common sustained arrhythmia. People live with this all the time. And here, guys, is exactly what AFib is going to look like on your monitor. We just look, see, it is, you know, irregularly irregular. It has no discernible pattern, no P waves. It's still narrow. Okay, this is the big thing of, um, of AFib. Now, let's talk about atrial flutter, okay? This is also a narrow complex tachycardia we're gonna see a sawtooth P wave pattern. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. This is a variable atrial rate, okay? This is a very fast rhythm. I've seen anywhere from 150 almost to like 250, but researchers have shown this is a 200 to 400 atrial rate easy, okay? It's a ventricular rate is dependent on the AV conduction ratio, which we're gonna go into in the next slide here. And remember, because it's a narrow complex tachycardia, it is going to have a narrow QRS complex. So going into rates, like I said, atrial rate 200 to 400 beats per minute, and that ventricular rate. If you see a two to one flutter, your ventricular rate is around 150 beats per minute. If you see a three to one flutter, it's gonna be around 100 beats per minute in the ventricle rate. And if it's a four to one flutter, you're gonna have a ventricle rate around 75 beats per minute. Now, these two to one, three to one, four to one flutters, the atrial rate could be 220, but your ventricle rate might only be 100. Okay, so just keep this in mind when you're looking at atrial flutter. Now, what does AFib look like? It is going to look something like this. Okay, now each one of these sawtooth uh, blades is going to be your P wave. Okay, and then you have your narrow complex QRS. So this is actually a four to one flutter. You have four P waves per one QRS complex. So QRS rate here would be around 75 beats per minute for a four to one flutter. The biggest thing, like I mentioned, is this saw to uh, P wave pattern, right? If you transition your, your rhythm strip upside down, you can actually clearly see it's literally like a sawtooth edge, like you would see on any type of like handsaw or something to that nature. So now we're going to get into exactly what cardism is and uh, what it is doing for the body, right? Cardism is a calcium channel blocker. 
This is going to mean it's going to inhibit the calcium influx into cardiac and vascular smooth muscle. And this is always during repolarization, okay? Now, you gotta know your tropes, right? Your cardiac tropes, your inotropic, dromotropic, and chronotropic here. Um, I'm gonna link a video up in the corner of this video to take you to where I uh, explain the tropes in full, but Cardizem gives you a negative inotropic, so that is the strength of squeeze, okay? So it's gonna have a softer squeeze, and it's a negative chronotropic, which means it's going to decrease the heart rate within the heart. Now we use Cardizem for one specific purpose, and that is to decrease heart rate during rapid AFib or rapid A flutters. Now, how it actually does this is remember, it's negative chronotropic classified, which means it's, it lowers heart rate. But how it does this is it prolongs the AV nodal refractions. And what this means is that when the signal goes from your atriums into your AV node, it's actually going to sit there and hold it for a little bit. There's already a pause in your AV junction, but Cardizem is going to increase this hold. So as it increases the hold, it only has so many beats that it can uh, push through the AV node down into the ventricles, so it elongates that timing between beats, which then decreases your rate. So that's how this is going to actually uh, function within the heart to lower that heart rate. So when we're using this, remember it's used in a stable patient only, right? If it becomes an unstable patient, we're gonna move towards other methods. But in a stable patient, we're gonna give a dose of 0.25 milligrams per kilo uh, and a max of 25 milligrams. And this is gonna be put in a 100 bag and infused IV over two minutes, okay? If after 15 minutes, this doesn't work, the rate doesn't come down or it goes down and then comes back up, you're gonna increase your dose 0.35 milligrams per kilogram to a max of 35 milligrams. Now, just remember guys, this is um, the common uh, Cardizem dosage. This is what my area uses. This is what I found on the internet, but just be sure to use your own protocols if they are different from this one here. So guys, that was Cardizem in a nutshell. Remember, we're gonna use it on stable patients for narrow complex tachycardias like AFib and A flutter because it is going to increase that hold in the AV junction and decrease the rate for the patient. I hope this helps and take care, stay safe.